You have often heard the story of the addicted. A dark, dismal past, followed by some sort of admission of powerlessness and eventual sobriety and happiness. What happens after this transition? Are the promises to no longer regret the past, to comprehend serenity and no peace true? The Most High Media Team set off to tell eight stories of life and long-term recovery. What is life like? And if it really is truly the great ride we are told it is, find out on The Road to Recovery. Yeah, that's pretty much as good as it gets. What? To follow him. Hit him. No, it's no. good. You follow me. You see and hear good shit, man. <laughs> okay, so he shows up over to the campus as a you know graduated pastor here. As and, a real uh, deal minister. Yeah, the real deal minister. He shows up over there, and Bob is having a bad day, and I can see it, like. You, you, you can see it, it's anyways. He just, he set his phone down on my table like that and I was like, oh, here we go. So when they walked outside, I walked over in between the two of them on the other side to try to diffuse. Yeah, do, I was ready you know, to be violent. I was ready to be physically violent. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But when I, I was I paid attention to it, and I could I was witnessing myself getting there, and so I was pulling myself back. And so once we got outside, I did try to like calm it down, because then I realized what I was who I was talking to, what was happening there, and I calmed him down. But he was getting all up in my face, and and, uh, and then you pulled him up, and then we found three 24 ounces. <laughs> All right, it's, we just woke up. We're at the bus. There's Kirk. There's Christian. Here's the bus. Look, look at that. We just woke up. We're going to the mountains today. Um, Kirk is gonna help us uh, honor the, the plants and the trees. He's gonna help us honor our environment. He's gonna honor the space at which we we exist in. Kirk, can you give us a prayer? A prayer? For uh -huh. the trees? For the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have, uh, well, I pray that we don't have any chainsaws close by today. To, uh, no, no, no access, so we can only burn. Burning burn the, the trees, trees is honor the tree. You can still so, use the trees. So if we create heat But we're tonight, just honoring it. We're just to acknowledge that, oh, we're, thank you trees, trees for, 
countertop. The countertop. Thank you. Yeah, geez. they're doing a ter terrible job of this. <laughs> so we're gonna go honor the trees ourselves. We ready? We live? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Kirk. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hold on. Can I can I get you speaking the mic one more time? Hello. Yep. Yep. Can you hear me? Kirk. Hello. Can you introduce yourself, Kirk? Can you give us yeah. your first and last name? Yeah, uh, my name is Kirk Droskel. My name is Christian Eric Bonio Jansen. My name is Adam Charles Abramitz, and we are on the road to recovery. Welcome to the show. Welcome. welcome. We are live over here, and we're recording over, over here. here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a good chance it's going to mess up. You know? yeah. how, we, many, how many cameras can you have running? One, two, three, four. Yeah? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Five. Five. We got five. five. There's three of us, five cameras. We're here to talk about some interesting topics today. Yeah. To my right is my buddy Christian, who just became an ordained pastor. Minister, yeah. Ordained minister. And it's an, it's an interfaith ministry. Inter, interfaith, yes. And I've got my man to my other right, the other other right, Kirk, who is just about to become the district governor, right, of the Rotary Club in Marietta or Alpharetta? And so I'm from the Alpharetta Rotary Club, but it's Rotary District 6900. Which is like a bunch of cities. Yeah, it's a, yeah. so it's pretty much from Alpharetta all the way down to the Florida line. So about 70 clubs. Right on. And I want to get into that. I want to get into the this new phase both you guys are entering. Yeah. Looks like the men are doing just fine on their pilgrimage to Montana. When last we were with Erica, she was talking about balancing motherhood and tennis. Let's see how that's going. You know, I'm just a beginner in this game, so <laughs> uh, what I'd like to say is something for the video. We could do a practice run, but normally I do it in the first run. Go ahead. You know, in life, everyone has ups and downs, both in life, in sports, and everything that you do. But it's important that no matter how difficult it seems, find a way to come back, baby. And this young lady, Erica, has gone through everything possible. But you know what? She's a perfect example of what it takes to come back and have a successful life. God bless you, everybody, from Nick Voluntary. Got it, got it. Got it. It's good. But it just it you know, for me, it goes so hand in hand with my recovery. Like I feel, I mean, Nick, this weekend was so important to me mentally. I can't even tell you because everything that I've been working on in my life that I am, I, I'm falling short and I don't know what it is. And then I get on the tennis court this weekend and I have Madeline, and Kenny and you. You need, no matter what Nick, Kenny and Madeline say, you need matches. We can Absolutely. Only, we can only tell you so much, baby. Well, what's amazing is those two matches right. is what I have been looking for right. my whole life inside of me. Right. Just the two matches, what it did for me. As a person. As a person. Well, you, what I can do in my life now and on the tennis court that's is... That's exactly right, dear. It's unbelievable. This will be the basis to do the rehab program that you're doing with your children, with your husband, and everything that you do. This has helped you and will help you more. But remember, do not be ashamed when you fall flat on your ass. But winners know how to get up and erase those calluses. Okay? All right.
of her mindset is um, over, I would say, over determined or over activated to play. Um, you can't do this in tennis because the mind, tennis, you have to be calm in your mind to make decisions every second. You gotta be making a decision all the time. And you have to be adapting to a ball that's coming to you. And also to make a decision of how tactically you want to organize everything. If you don't have a calm mind with a vision, you can't do this really. So you cannot go through by force. She likes to, you know, be head on and determined. Uh, it will help her to go through the difficult uh, moments but not necessarily is the right uh, mindset to solve a problem. Right when I got sober, um, I suddenly had everything to take care of. You know, and, and forgetting that I was a street person, you know, and that um, I lost my house, I lost my kids, I lost my ex-husband, I lost my parents, I lost my car, you know, I lost my clothing, I lost my self-respect, I lost, you know, my myself uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, sexually, everything, and um, nothing mattered. And then suddenly I got sober and I wanted to fix everything. Suddenly bills mattered, you know, uh, getting a car mattered, um, obviously getting my kids was the most important thing, or it, maybe it's not obvious, but it was for me. So I went from you know, being a street person to suddenly um, getting rigorously honest and fighting for uh, my life and getting my kids back. Yeah! One more. That's why I did it again. I slowed down. I visualized what I was supposed to do. And then I watched where I was supposed to go. Excellent. And I thought about it a step before I was supposed to do it, what I needed to do. Okay. Wonderful. Oh. Wonderful. Excellent job. It's not only just you want to do it, also it's how we're going to do it. How are we going to do it? Yeah? That's the next question. On the next episode of Road to Recovery. And one may say, why is Salem and Hassan sitting in front of all that drug paraphernalia? This road is closed. I got my graduation papers to uh, snorting heroin. <laughs> <laughs>